Hello everyone and welcome to Penguin's Holiday Tales, where I'll be telling you all the story related to the most recent holiday. Since there's no such thing as Thanksgiving, I skipped ahead a month to bring you a Christmas episode. I hope that this will be as much fun for you, the viewer, as it wasn't for me, since I had to come up with something mere weeks before a deadline. This was much more effort than I put into my usual work with a spur of the moment idea than abandon it in a pile of unfinished products about a week later approach to most things I've tried doing. But nonetheless, I've put it upon myself to drag this out to the very end. And since my flash animating skill is still in the basic crudely drawn still frames I've reviewed, seconds portion of having the patience to actually sit and draw out each individual frame until I actually start being smart and make reasonable character segments, I figure why the hell not? The story you're about to hear and see involves a psycho killer, his team of dangerous yet incompetent followers, a tree of painfully realistic size, and a panda simply because of the amusement factor of race car. Until I actually get voice actors for these amazingly drawn works of art, I'll be playing each part myself, while simultaneously narrating the story so you people who have the attention span of a thumbtack can still kind of understand what's going on within the boundaries of a screwed up reality. Are we ready? I don't care. If you're not, pause the video and take a shot of adrenaline straight to the left lung so the liquids can enter your bloodstream and make little adrenaline babies with your brain cells. Ready now? Good, let's get started. We begin our story in the city of Southern District, a place that doesn't really exist as far as I know and is really only there because I don't want any of my characters screwing up real cities just to listen to people complain about how I carelessly vaporize their homes without a second thought about what I even did to get the death ray that I'm holding. A seemingly normal apartment building, which is actually the bad guy's base, but you aren't supposed to know that yet, stands out among the rest. This is the bad guy's base, the place where Marcus Flynn and his incompetent team plot to overthrow Order 13. A military group created for the express purpose of finding and destroying the team that, until very recently, has been called the Dark Brotherhood. I've had to try coming up with a new name for them ever since it was pointed out to me that the Elder Scrolls series, which I've never really had enough, that is to say, any interest in playing ever, has an organization with the exact same name. So, to dodge any chance of being sued for copyright infringement, these guys will need a new name. For now, they will be titled the Flying Pink Squirrels, just because I like to see Marcus cringe at the name. It was a normal day in the planning room, which was just a living room that had a television propped up on a few cinder blocks and a plywood board in front of a couch and a few chairs that looked like they were found in the far end of a trash wasteland. In fact, they were actually picked up on the side of the road just across the street from an Applebee's that doesn't have any reason to be in this story other than to be mentioned once and never again. A few vagrants and a ninja were killed in the process of acquiring this couch, but what are you gonna do? I'm sure the couch has much more interesting things to tell you about that happened in its life, such as when it guarded the eastern wall of the office inside a very important business that made the little plastic pieces of the ends of shoelaces and the zombie apocalypse. For reasons unexplained, the building exploded from two rocks hitting the CEO in the face at supersonic speed. The force of the little bits of skull and brain that flew everywhere killed a janitor nine floors down just before the explosion, but he wasn't doing anything important anyway. Anyway, one of the other characters turns on the television to see what's going on. Don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure that the batteries were made in Rome by the Greek god Zeus and Jack Skellington from The Nightmare Before Christmas, which was a really good movie. I mean, what's cooler than an unreasonably tall and thin skeleton who sets himself on fire within the first ten minutes of the movie? Nothing, that's what. I mean, this one time I saw this giant spider eating some bald kid that looked like Charlie Brown, but I don't think that measures up to a flaming scarecrow skeleton. At some point, this commercial plays for a place in the city that is magic enough to grow trees and is selling them at the low price of a simple three-digit number. You remember those commercials, right? They all pretty much say, buy your Christmas trees here because we're better than everyone else who's doing this exact same thing. Those were the days, weren't they? Back when kids actually believed Santa Claus was real, not just your parents hiding pre-bought gifts for months on end just to have the carefully preserved wrapping paper mercilessly ripped off and forgotten in the corner. Back when children going to school were actually taught to write instead of typing letters on a keyboard from age five onward. You know what'll happen to those kids when technology crashes? They'll wither away and die from having their crazy cell phone internet gaming things pulled from their lives like a large fishing hook from the jaw of a particularly small fish. It'll hurt like hell when the tissue surrounding their mouth is torn apart, then infected by some weird water virus that only fish can contract, and finally just die of oxygen deprivation. Speaking of oxygen deprivation, anyone remember that scene from Event Horizon where the guy gets ejected from the airlock? The one where he almost dies in space from all the air being sucked out of him along with most of his veins? Classic right there. For no reason in particular, it reminds me of this video I watched a while ago. When you're done with this, search Roses Are Red and watch the flash animation that should be there. It's a minute or two of my life that I'll never get back. Something else you might want to check out is this guy Zero's channel. He's a freaking flash god with animations. Did you know that the UV rays from the sun can cause cancer? That's part of the reason why I stay inside all the time, hiding in my room like a bat in a cave, making bad animations and stories that go nowhere but through the ears of my listeners, slowly giving them malignant tumors that will eventually become sentient and take over their bodies, much in the same way that the head crabs from Half-Life take over random people just by jumping up and stuffing their tiny little chicken-shaped bodies with their head of their perfectly good human. Why not just eat it? That'd make more sense to me if I were a head crab. Oh wow, is that really the time? I wasn't expecting this to be done so quickly. Anyway, the flying pink squirrels went and got the tree, which was quickly burnt to the ground by an enraged slipper. Also, there was a panda. And a race car. I don't have ADD, damn it!